Hey guys, Jack here with Milmar Buildings, and I want to run over some building terms used when we are talking about pole barns that sometimes people mix up or don't quite understand what is being referred to. Hopefully this helps you on your projects as you either plan it out with a builder or get ready to build one yourself. Starting off with grade, when we talk about grade, we are referring to where the ground meets the building. Usually finished grade meets the bottom of the skirt board, which we will cover in just a second. Next, the term on center or OC refers to how far apart lumber is spaced. For instance, the posts are generally set eight foot on center, which means they are eight feet from the middle of one post to the middle of the next post. These two are mixed up often. The gable ends of the building are the sides where you can see the peak of the roof line going upwards. The eave sides are the sides where you would place gutters for water runoff. Pre-made engineered trusses are the support system for the roof as well as the ceiling for the interior. They should be designed and made custom for your particular snow and wind loads to make sure they can hold properly. They generally are set on 8 foot centers, 4 foot centers, or 2 foot centers depending on the roof and ceiling load. They come in a variety of shapes, but the main two are standard and scissor trusses. Standard have a flat bottom cord, which simply means a flat ceiling on your interior and scissor trusses are vaulted in the middle to allow more headroom for a loft, a larger door, or simply for the look. When we talk about overhang, we're talking about how much the roof extends past the walls on the ends and or sides of the walls. Normally overhangs are either 12 inches or 24 inches depending on preference. Purlins are the lumber that is placed on top of the trusses to form the structure of the roof and provide a place to attach the roof metal panels into. Similarly, the girts are the same idea, just on the walls. We generally place 2x4 lumber 24 inches on center for both our purlins and our girts. Girders are the larger lumber placed at the top of the walls to form the structure and support roof trusses that fall between posts. Sometimes these are made with 2x10s, 2x12s, or LVL laminated beams depending on weight load needed. This board is the bottom girt on the wall and is called skirt board, grade board, splash board depending on who you're talking to. It is treated as it will come in contact with ground at grade level. It is used to attach the bottom edge of the metal siding as well as a form to pour the concrete slab floor in a pole barn. A header is used to span a large door in an opening where structural strength is needed but no posts can be placed. It is sometimes larger lumber but often it is an LVL beam which is a laminated wood beam for extra strength. You may have seen house wrap on a traditional home before they place the siding but did you know that you can add this between your wall girts and metal siding on a pole barn to seal up the building even more and prepare for insulation in the future? It's a nice extra added protection. Similar to house wrap, vapor barrier is placed on the roof to stop condensation on the bottom of the metal roof panels from dripping into your building. It looks like bubble wrap and is reflective foil on the top and white vinyl on the inside. It is placed on top of the purlins just before installing the metal roof panels. When someone mentions gauge, they are talking about the thickness of the metal siding or roof. Most buildings are constructed with either 29 or 26 gauge, and the lower the number, the thicker the metal. For instance, 16 gauge metal is thicker than 29 gauge. Standing seam roof and siding is a higher end product that hides all the fasteners from your view. Standard pole barns mainly use exposed fasteners with traditional metal as the cost is much cheaper to install and the look is still quite good. A good use for standing seam roof would be if you are building a pole barn home and want a more custom quality look with no exposed fasteners. Soffit is the underside of the roof overhangs and is usually finished with ridged metal or perforated panels in order to allow airflow into the attic space of the roof. Fascia is the outer edge of the roof overhang and is usually trimmed out with metal to cover any exposed wood. Milmar Buildings puts rodent guard trim on all our metal sided buildings as it is simply a piece of metal channel that seals up all the ridge openings at the base of the metal wall panels and creates a nice clean line. J channel is a metal trim piece bent into the shape of a squarish J that is placed around doors and sometimes windows to hide the rough edge of the metal siding that has been cut to fit around that opening. 
Corner trim is a piece of metal custom bent to seal up the corners of a pole barn and hide the rough edges of the metal panels as they meet at the corner of the building. Often this color is matched to the roof or the wainscot trim. Wainscot is a three foot piece of trim that is usually matched to the roof color to provide visual interest. It's also nice in case of damage from a lawnmower or vehicle to be able to replace a small piece of metal rather than the whole wall height. A dormer is a small roof structure placed on the side of a roof for aesthetics or to allow more light into the building. While they look nice, these can add considerable price to your structure due to the labor and planning involved in installing these correctly. Eve lights or panels are ridged clear panels that can be placed near the top of the walls to allow in natural light. These are best suited for ag buildings, for animals or tractor storage, where electric lights are either not available or want to be kept to a minimum. Remember, if you want to insulate your building, you will want to go with insulated windows instead of this clear plastic panel. A gable roof is a standard roof shape, as shown here. A gable roof is what comes to mind when you think of an old-fashioned barn with a big hayloft. A lean-to is an added overhang area attached to the side of the pole barn that can be either framed with open rafters for maximum height or finished with a ceiling to give a more traditional porch look. A cupola is a decorative feature that can be placed on the roof to add some rustic charm. Standard sizes are 2 feet, 3 feet, and 4 feet square. These can be finished with a custom weather vane to really look sharp. A widow's peak is a pointed addition to the gable end of the roof overhang that gives a pole barn a custom look and recalls the style of old barns that use the widow's peak to attach a pulley system for loading hay bales into the loft. This is only a sampling of some of the terms that we use when building a pole barn. If there's something we missed or you have a question, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you on it. Thanks for watching this video and be sure to check out www.milmarpolebuildings.com.